Situation Report. UN Security Council approves the Munich Security Conference, previously endorsed by 17-nation International Syria Support Group. A Chapter 7 peace enforcement mission is authorized. Mobilization of UN peacekeeping units will take 90 to 120 days. Therefore, President of the United States has directed Secretary of Defense, in concert with Secretary of State, to begin rapid deployment of interim U.S. forces. Commander U.S. Central Command is ordered to start immediate planning for and implementation of presidential directive. Initial forces to be en route to the area of responsibility within 48 hours. Mission is assigned code name Inherent Rescue. Problem Approach Combine commercial off-the-shelf cloud-based modeling and simulation application with concise five-step planning process. Use resulting capability to explore supply chain options and make good decisions in a timely manner as the situation evolves. Assumptions U.S. Navy Carrier Task Force is dispatched from 6th Fleet Normal Patrol duties in the Mediterranean to rendezvous with advanced positions, supply ships, and support initial operations. Joint Task Force 51 to deploy to designated AOR centered on operating base vicinity Hamam Military Airport. Establish secure air and land links between Carrier Task Force vicinity TARDIS and cities of Aleppo, Idlib, Marat Newman, and Homs. Concept. Supply chains are composed of combinations of four entities, products, facilities, vehicles, and routes. Model any supply chain with combinations of these four entities. Place them on a map and simulate their interactions to see how that supply chain will work. Logic. The simulation uses an agent-based deterministic nonlinear model to calculate interactions between the four supply chain entities. It calculates interactions on an hour-by-hour -hour basis. Animated map displays during simulations show movement of vehicles on supply routes. And on-screen graphics and numeric displays show daily results. Patterns and trends emerge as each day's results are calculated and displayed. Process. Simulations are part of a concise five-step process based on two models widely used in business and government. The first is Sales and Operational Planning, or SNOP, model shown by the blue boxes. The second is shown by the gray boxes and is based on the Department of Defense Architecture Framework, or DUDAF. Step one is the development of the overall concept for the operation, the CONOPS for this mission. The simplified OV-1 diagram shown here is the CONOPS for inherent rescue. Another key activity is deciding which units to station at what facilities in order to best carry out the mission. Those decisions on facilities and units are shown here. In step two, mission planners make decisions regarding specific activities needed for the mission. They decide on the personnel that will be involved in those activities and the facilities that will house them. This map shows the civilian facilities and the people and activities they will support. When facilities and related activities and numbers of people are decided upon, then forecasts can be made for the amounts of different products that will be needed at each facility each day. Step three is where the mission planning team decides on a plan and backup plans for using available vehicles to move products to meet forecasted demand. The route map shows where vehicles will be positioned to move products through the supply chain and move refugees from contested areas to the HOM safe haven. In step four, data in the plans is used to build a supply chain model. The demand plan provides data on products, facilities, and demand. And the supply plan provides data on vehicles and routes. Then, simulations show how well the plans work. Simulations show where problems emerge and provide data to help people figure out how to fix them. A map-based user interface provides big picture context to help people understand specific details so people can quickly orient themselves and analyze various options, aka they gain situational awareness.
Step 5 takes a simulation that runs well for 15 days and makes it the operating plan for the next 15 days. Simulation numbers for products, facilities, vehicles, and routes show how to organize and how to run the supply chain. Once in operation, the team monitors activities and receives new data from facilities and vehicles in the field. As situations change, the supply chain model is updated to reflect new decisions. This is illustrated in a second scenario. The mission supply chain is reconfigured to support a decision to evacuate refugees from the Ham safe haven and relocate them to the island of Cyprus. Analysis of simulation results verifies decisions for how to position vehicles and plan routes. However, simulations found problems in delivery schedules. Simulations also verify selection of facilities and show route structure has the flexibility needed to respond quickly to supply chain disruptions and prevent problems in one area from spreading to other areas. This modeling and simulation process has been used to explore and document the operations of other supply chains. Real supply chains as well as hypothetical and historical supply chains have been modeled and simulated. Here is the supply chain of a real company making furniture in Indonesia and exporting worldwide. And this is a historical model of the supply chain that supported the Japanese invasion of India in 1944. This logistics planning process, supported by easy-to-use simulation software, can significantly improve mission planning and operations monitoring. The process and software shown here is easily adapted to support military and humanitarian decision-making under conditions of stress and uncertainty. Additional features would improve usefulness, specifically real-time data feeds from field locations and multi-user online collaboration between people representing different organizations, military, governmental, and NGO. When all can see what is happening and all can collaborate in discussing options, running simulations, and making decisions, consensus happens faster and actions taken are far more effective. In a world where humanitarian missions are increasingly common due to natural and man-made causes, there is a growing need for teams of geographically dispersed people in different organizations to collaborate effectively and combine their talents and energies to achieve common goals.